Hey, what up guys? It's John from Mongo Fishing. So today I want to talk to you about stick baits. Uh, the Yamamoto Cinco, the uh, Gander Mountain Wacky Stick, the um, Strike King Shimmy Stick, bunch of names, bunch of manufacturers, uh, the same basic concept of a worm. So, um, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Just a couple different ways to rig them, how to use them, and then maybe some subtle differences between the different brands. Not a lot of the brands, again, primarily focused on how to use them, how to catch fish with them. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the easiest way to rig them, I think, um, and my favorite way to, to fish a Cinco, and for argument's sake, I'll probably refer to all of these as Cinco's, even though Cinco is a brand name. Um, so just bear with me. Uh, anyway, so probably the easiest way to do it is a 3 aught EWG, extra wide gap hook, um, fished weightless. All right, guys, so you got your uh, 3 aught EWG tied on, extra wide gap hook, right? Take your stick bait. You want to stick it through the center of the, the head, right? Uh, run it down about a half inch, three quarter inch, something like that. Or sorry, three eighths inch. Um, run it down so it goes over top of the eye of the hook. It's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, poke it through like that. Push forward, pull back. There you have a Texposed. A Texposed uh, worm, right? Now, why did I go over top of the eye? So, what I like to do is I like to peg mine. Um, so, I peg it by taking a toothpick. Take a toothpick, right? You know where the eye of your hook is. You can see it, you can feel it, right? So take this toothpick and run it through the eye of the hook. Okay? Take a pair of pliers. Trim it off. There you go. It's in there. Okay. Now, why is that important? So, as you're as you're fishing, if you get hung up on stuff, or you hook a fish, or or, or whatever, um, your worm has a tendency to either go up the line, or come off, or whatever. Right. So, comes off. Okay. But it's not coming off the hook. You see that? I'm pulling. It's not coming off. Um, Saves you a lot of worms in the long, in the, the long run. Okay, so that's rigging style number one. Weightless, text post. Oh, also, so yeah, let, let's cover the action. So the action on this, as it's sinking, it's sinking nice and, and flat. Okay, and it's kind of doing a snake-like motion, ever so softly and gentle, but it's a, it's kind of a, I don't know, side to side motion that drive the fish crazy so but it's really really subtle um, but that's how the action looks on a Cinco as it's sinking weightless so second style second way to rig it same way text posed this time you're gonna add some split shot now the amount of split shot is up to you um, you know, if it's super windy, you're going to want to add more than if it's not. If it's not windy, if it's a pretty calm day. Um, but you're going to add your split shot, you know, 18 to 24 inches up. Okay? Um, that doesn't have to be split shot. I mean, there's, it's called a mojo rig. There's mojo weights if you want to buy them. But uh, split shot weights, BB weights, or mojo weights your choice but 
that's all you did. Crimped on. A split shot. Just give me some more line. Make it easier to work with. So, at a split shot, like I said, 18, 24 inches away, okay? So what this does, as it's sinking, it's gonna sink down weight first, obviously, right? But your, your worm, as it's sinking, is spiraling. It's kind of doing a, a helicopter type thing. Um, it's gonna be sitting kind of like this and spinning all the way down. Now, once the weight hits the, hits the bottom, then, the momentum will kind of slow down on this and it'll start falling the way that it did before when it was weightless and natural, okay? We'll start throwing in a little bit of that, that side to side shimmy action. So that's rigging option number two, the mojo rig. All right, so number three. Number three is one that I don't use very often um, it's very effective, but I only use it on worms that I've already been using and have caught fish and are starting to get beat up. I don't use it on brand new worms because, well, I'm messing up brand new worms. So, what this one is, is let's put on an old worm here real quick. Okay, so here's an old shimmy stick. So same thing, run it through. Run it up to the top. I'm not gonna peg it uh, for, if I was fishing it, I would peg it, but since I'm not fishing, I'm just demonstrating I'm not gonna bother pegging this one. Um, again, to expose it, so we're gonna like this, all right? Now, grab yourself a pair of scissors. Come back here to the back of your worm, and you're going to carefully cut the center of the tail. You're going to split this. Okay. Now, I, again, I don't use this very often. Um, this is why I keep my old baits, though, my old worms. Um, but split it. You know, I did an inch and a half or so. And then you're going to split those again. There's an ice cream truck driving around. Okay, so. What it leaves you with is this weird floppy tail, okay? Now, it's nothing super spectacular and special, but it's something different. The fish aren't used to seeing this because not many people do it. Um, to be honest with you, I learned about it on YouTube. Uh, the uh, uh, Tactical Bassin is actually the, the people that I learned this from, and I tried it, and sure enough, it works great. So. Yeah, there it is, the split tail. Okay, rigging option number four. Rigging option number four is wacky. Wacky rig is probably the easiest rig you'll ever do. It's it's easier than Texas, and Texas is pretty easy also. Um, now this... <laughs> Yep, that's my life, kids. Anyway, so. Um, wacky. All you're doing is you are tying on a hook. It does not need to be a weedless hook. I prefer to use weedless hooks when I'm fishing wacky style, but uh, that's just my personal preference. But you tie yourself on a hook. Um, your your uh, decision on shape and size um, again this is just what I prefer to use 
Um, but tie on your hook. Doesn't have to be weighted. It can be weightless, like this is, but weighted also works. You can use a jig head if you want. Anyway, tie on your hook. Grab yourself a worm. Um, you know what? Here's one over here. Another reason why I keep all my used worms. One for the split tail and two for the wacky. So you kind of find out where the center of balance is. Okay. Obviously that's not it. So try to find where your center of balance is, approximate at least. And then you take your hook and you run it right through. And literally that is all you have to do. Now with, with weedless, drop your weed guard down and you're done. Um, you cast it as it's sinking, it flutters like that up and down as it's sinking okay drives the bass nuts um, so the disadvantage to this is these worms tear very easy and Cinco's are pricey you know they're about a dollar a worm sometimes depending on where you're buying them at but they're you know eight worms for eight bucks um, so it, it gets pricey it adds up pretty quick that's why I use this uh, I use wacky rig on my old worms, ones that are beat up that I can't rig any other way now because they've just had hooks run through them so many times, so many fish caught off of them. But that's how you do wacky. Now, there's another way to do the wacky, and it allows your, uh, keeps your worms um, in, in good condition longer, and that is the use of an o ring tool. Okay? So, an o ring tool. You take your worm, you slide it in the O-ring tool, you grab one of the O-rings, and you roll it up on your worm. Too easy, All right? Move the O-ring where your center of gravity is, that we discussed a, center, uh, a, a second ago. Okay, figure out where that's at. Take your hook and run it directly underneath your O-ring. Now, when a fish grabs it, now when a fish grabs it and he's pulling, he's got that O-ring, right? That worm would have torn off already. That O-ring is holding it in place. So if he didn't grab the whole thing and he just grabbed a piece of worm, you're not losing your worm. Okay, it's still on there. Right? O ring save money. So, that's the O ring wacky. And there's another O ring wacky out there. But you have to really shop around for it. And this is the uh, Gander Mountain brand. Uh, Big Bite Baits also does it, uh, and I'm sure there's a few other bait companies out there, but um, the O-ring is built inside. Can you see that? You see that? There's an O-ring inside. So what this, all you have to do in this one is take your hook, hook directly under the O-ring that's already pre-built in your worm, and you're done just like that okay you don't need to figure out where the center of gravity is they already did that for you see you see the o-ring right there okay that one's like super simple I love big bait bites and gander mountain worms for those for that particular reason right there I got on my way to find them now the gander is closed or closing it's gonna be hard to find those worms I know the gander here locally is gone okay that's that so that was uh, rigging option number four, wacky. Now, the last one. Super deadly, um, rarely used, and that is drop shot. So, 
how do you drop shot? So there's nothing tied on this, this string, okay? So what you want to do is, you're going to run your, your fishing line through your hook, and then you're going to, you know, i got like two feet right here, foot and a half, two feet, okay, for a tag in. So then I'm going to run that same line back through the same way it just came out of, okay? So what I end up with is... this loop, my hook, okay, right, too easy, and then of course this giant tag end over here, okay, so you make a loop knot, called a palomar knot ultimately, but what you're doing is taking your line, looping on itself like that, tuck it through like that, right, See what we have right here so far? Okay. And then take this this big loop tag end that you have, run it around. You're gonna run your your hook through the center of that that loop, right? See that? Run it through like that. Get it wet. Cinch it down. Cinch down. Okay. So now, now it's looking like this. You're going to take your tag end one more time, and you're going to take it down through the top of your hook, the the open part, right? down right through that opening again okay so what that does is that gets your hook sticking out like that to the side see it tag in down here now down here is where your weights gonna go now a drop shot weight they make specific drop shot weights but you know, you can use anything you want. Um, drop shot specific weights have this weird little loop thing on it, this little metal loop. It's a, it's a swivel also. You know, the weight can turn. That loop isn't turning. So you take your tag into your line, run it through that weird swivel thing on the, the uh, drop shot weight, pull it up, it's stuck in place too easy to remove it you just do the opposite grab it pull down but there you go so your weight is on and it's in this case about two feet there's the weight two feet down we have our hook okay and then for the hook the way you're gonna rig your worm and I use, I like to use worms that, that I've been using for quite a while. You know, as you're using worms and they get beat up and, and you know, you end up using them on the, the wacky rig or, or however else you want to do it. Or you just got to, you know, keep biting off the tip to make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Cutting off instead of biting, but you know what I'm saying. To make it smaller and smaller and smaller and you can continue to keep using it. One, don't throw those pieces back in the water because it's not real food. The fish will eat it, but he's not going to digest it uh, the way he would real food. So don't do that. Just take the pieces home with you, throw them in the trash can when you get back to the dock, whatever. But anyway, back to what I was saying, the way you rig it. So you take this little, your little worm and your drop shot hook. And you just poke it through like that. That's it. There's, that's all you gotta do. Nothing else to it, okay? Um, what happens is, because your weight is on the bottom, weights on the bottom and your worm is up here it's gonna be sitting out like this in the in the water in the current right it's not going to be hanging down like this but what happens is as you jiggle your rod ever so slightly the action directly 
happens, I mean, it happens directly on uh, the worm, okay? Since the worm is on top. Now, if you were fishing the other way around, like we did earlier with the split shot rig, uh, where you got the split shot up here and your worm down there, when you're bouncing, the action immediately happens on the worm, but now, or sorry, on the, on the split shot and affects the worm. But here, this way, the action is coming directly on the worm don't overwork it just it doesn't take much to make this thing look natural okay so just kind of bounce a little bit every once in a while you can actually vertically jig this if you wanted to um, drop shotting is very very deadly works great especially when fish aren't very active if they don't want to chase anything down it's a great way to get them um, so that's that what am i missing um I don't think I'm missing anything. So, do me a favor, guys. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what is your preferred method to fish a stick bait. Um, you know, tell me what you like to do. Tell me if there's uh, any other. Well, yeah. Tell me your preferred method. What's your preferred brand too? Um, do you have a preference? Do you like the Senkos over, you know, the the wacky sticks or or over the Yum Dingers or whatever? Um, what is your preferred bait? what is your preferred way to rig it and uh, I think that's about it um, don't forget to uh, give it a thumbs up um, please subscribe it should be a picture of a fish it's either down there maybe over there it's a fish holding it fast um, so yeah hit that subscribe button leave me a thumbs up leave me a comment please and uh, get out on the water be safe go stick some lips